I'm John Furrier with SiliconAngle.com and SiliconAngle.tv, and I'm here with my co-host Dave Vellante. We are live inside Oracle Open World in San Francisco, California, where the streets are closed, people are partying, tons of schmoozing, 45,000 people shutting down all the streets. Larry Ellison gave a keynote last night. Oracle is the big, bad gorilla on the block here in the tech industry, and everyone's here. So we're excited to cover it. And, uh, you know, the top news here is that Oracle is going heavily into the hardware business and increasing their performance. They own Java, they're having Java One going on in San Francisco as well. So every single tech geek, every enterprise guy is in town, Dave, and uh, we're covering it wall to wall like a blanket. SiliconAngle.com is where all the news is breaking. We'll be covering the news. We'll be covering specific topics that we see as trending items within our, our dashboard that we're monitoring. And uh, we're going to have great guests. At one o'clock we've got Ray Wang with news coming in. We've got uh, tons of executives coming in. And we're going to talk tech, virtualization, cloud, mobile. Oracle owns the enterprise. They're in the top accounts. Um, they're um, probably the one company, Dave, that's being, being attacked by everybody. Everyone wants their market share. Highly competitive. Larry Ellison is an industry in the, in, uh, legend who's known for sailing uh, yachts. He's bringing the America's Cup to San Francisco. Uh, and last night got a World Series ring from the San Francisco Giants on stage. So <laughs> what an event here in San Francisco. Yeah, We're so bring we've, it all uh, there. we've got all the news covered here, John. As you said, keep it right here on, on siliconangle.tv, uh, siliconangle.com, wikibon.org. If you've got some questions, check out those resources. If we don't have the answer, send us a note, ask a question, send us a tweet, and we'll try to get it for you in the community. Yeah. So, so, Dave, for the folks out there watching, we're just uh, getting some love from justin.tv, and uh, this is uh, the, the Cube. The Cube is siliconangle.tv's flagship telecast, where we go out to the events out in the industry, the top and most important events, and we cover it like a blanket. Every day, multiple days, eight hours a day, bringing it live. I want to thank justin.tv for great support and a great system. We know they're doing a lot of gaming. We like to bring perspective and opinion, unfiltered, independent analysis of events, and we're the only ones doing it, going to these events and going going deep, going live with our commentary. So thanks for watching. This is theCUBE. Again, our flagship telecast where we extract the signal from the noise and share that with our, with our, our, our followers, our friends, and you guys. So thanks so much. So John, um, in these spotlights, we like to go deep and share with practitioners our knowledge and, and our community's knowledge and bring in subject matter experts. And we're going to talk about data protection. It's a very important topic. You know, data protection is like insurance, right? I mean, nobody wants to spend a lot for it, but you have to do it. Um, and in the Oracle world, it's, it's, it's probably more important because it's your critical data. So what we have here is we prepared some graphics that, uh, that Mark's going to show you and we're just going to talk through some of this stuff. So maybe, maybe John, we can start by taking a look at the market angle. And as we talked about at, at VMworld, there's an explosion of data. Joe Tucci was on stage this morning talking about just an enormous amount of data. IDC says 1.2 zettabytes shipped last year. That's a, a trillion billion or a billion trillion, however you want to look at it. And they say that's going to grow 44x by the end of the decade. And um, the other trend we see is virtualization, right? You saw that virtualization obviously was a big theme at, at VMworld. Well, it's happening in Oracle shops as well, even though Oracle, you know, not necessarily supportive of virtualization products like VMware or Hyper-V, it's pr yeah. pushing its own, but the, the dominant platform within Oracle shops is, is VMware. And, and I would say that 90% of the shops out there that I talk to are doing yeah. some kind of, or will be doing some kind of VMware. Um, so that pressures uh, the backup space. Now Oracle DBAs basically have three choices that are Oracle supported, right? And, and that means that Oracle is going to you know, support them fully and embrace them. And there are really three things. User managed, uh, which is really old school. Um, Oracle recovery manager, otherwise known as RMAN in backup parlance, and Oracle import export. I'm going to talk about each of those um, and, and talk about the trade-offs and the pluses and minuses and just give a brief overview before we dig into it with the uh, subject matter experts. But the one big theme here, John, is as you know, disk is replacing tape as the primary backup and the real reason is speed of recovery and reliability, right? Yeah, disk yeah. is way, way faster, all right? Um, and of course, deduplication makes the economics of disk much, much better. So the first one I'm going to talk about, uh, John, is user-managed backup. And this is the old tried and true. They're basically what they are is, is scripts that are written by the DBA or somebody else within the organization. Um, and you, the scripts put the database into and out of backup mode and do handle all the tasks associated with backup. So it's very manual, very script-oriented. There's a long history in Oracle shops, which is why a lot of people like it. 
It's managed by the DBA so they can control it. Um, and it's seen as cheap. Um, a, lot of, a lot of shops are concerned that you've got to go out and buy a, a, a license uh, for an agent if you're doing our man. Now, a lot of that has changed, and I'll talk about that. The problem with user-managed backups is they're very error-prone. Uh, because they're scripts uh, and because there's a lot of manual intervention, uh, you've got to uh, 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 really pay attention to what you're doing. Uh, it's complicated for the DBA. And the recovery in particular, you know, backup is one thing, recovery is everything. And the recovery here is, is manual. And as a result of all this, you can't do incremental backup. So you're backing up the whole database. It's in the entire database every single time. So it's a bandwidth suck. And if you're virtualizing, that makes it that much worse. So the second option we're going to talk about is RMAN. And RMAN is by far the preferred approach. Oracle is you know, fully supporting it. And when you talk to practitioners about best practice, it's really RMAN is, is what it's all about. RMAN is a, a, an Oracle API. We talked a lot at VMworld a couple weeks ago about VMware APIs. Well, this is Oracle's backup API. So it directly communicates with the database. It's like a fast pipeline between the, 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 the data and the database, the backup device, the backup system, and the backup process. So it's much, much simpler than, than so-called user managed because you've got end-to-end -end visibility on that backup. What that does is it allows you to do incremental backups. So you can just back up the changes. So you're backing up a lot less data. Obviously, you've got to do a full backup the first time through, but you're talking about much, much smaller data uh, sets every night. So that means your backup windows are a lot less pressured. Um, and so rest restorations are much, much simpler. You can just pick and choose what you want. And it integrates with all the major backup software, whether it's you know Symantec, EMC, Commvault, all the major packages uh, integrate with RMAN. Um, some of the drawbacks is it's new to a lot of shops. People, you know, new change is scary to people. Um, and it's perceived as expensive because they, there used to be some, some license costs involved with licensing the agent, although most of those issues are resolved because people are now licensing or charging on a capacity basis. So there's really no extra charge. And the last one I'm going to talk about before we talk about some user imperatives is import-export. Um, backup, I should put that in quotes. What really this is is a snapshot in time. It's really not a backup. It's simple, easy peasy, it's a snapshot in time. And the other nice thing about it is it's database version independent. So uh, an import export backup you know, on one version of a database will work on a, a, a new or older version of a database. It really doesn't matter. The problem is you've got to quiesce the database. Um, you can only recover at a point in time. It's not really a backup. It's an archive. So you know, it, 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 it's easy, but it's not what's recommended. So John, we've put together some eight customer imperatives and, and I'll run through them quickly and then we'll you know, dig into the spotlight here. You know, the first one is you know, back up often. You know, vote often, we'll back up often. Uh, and then test that backup that could be recovered. A lot of customers don't adequately test recovery. And there's a golden rule in, in Oracle backup and really in, in any backup and recovery, it's really separate the backup data and all the metadata and all the files that you need to recover um, from the disks that contain the actual data files. So if you have a problem, you really want to separate the media, the RAID devices, the volumes, and the file systems. Even though they're reliable, they, they break sometimes. And if you lose the data and the backup data, you're basically in huge trouble. Hey, that's all great and all, but I mean, that's like kind of common sense. Why is it an imperative that it should be doing it anyway? What's different now? Well, because Oracle, well, a, lot of, a lot of customers don't do that, believe it or not. Um, and, yeah. and if you don't do that in Oracle, you're talking about mission critical data, right? So that's why it's so important. What's the problem? What's the key problem, in your opinion? The key problem is that if you put the backup data and the, and the, the corporate data on the same device and somehow it gets corrupted or somehow you lose that media, you're out, you're down, you're fired. That's really the problem. Lot, the data's lost? You know, if, yeah, the data's lost. It's gone. It's corrupted forever. Or, so Oracle's in all these top zillion accounts, 20 top banks, and you, they don't do backup? Oh, they do them but it's complicated. And there are some peop new people to work. It's a spectrum, it's like anything. You've got people that are very experienced at doing backups and people that aren't. And the ones that aren't might make mistakes because this stuff is complicated. Um, the other thing is virtualization, right? Virtualization, we talked about this a lot, stresses backup. So you've got to simplify the process. That's why really RMAN is the preferred approach. You got to look at that as the best practice and you know, do the math on disk-based recovery. Ideally, you could leave at least 24 hours of your redo logs on disk 
because you don't want to have to get that stuff from tape. If you've got to do a recovery of a redo log, you want to do it from disk, you don't want to do it from tape. What are the key virtualization trends that are driving backup? Obviously virtualization, great technology, you know, disk is replacing tape, SSDs and flash is replacing the disk. What's the main tech and going on that drive this? As it relates to backup, the biggest issue with virtualization is, as we know, servers traditionally have been underutilized, right, that 10%, 15%. Well, backup is one application that is not underutilized. When you're doing a backup, you're a 90% utilization of that service. So when you virtualize, you consolidate, you have now less physical assets. As a result, you're more, you're more constrained and your backup window gets more pressured. So you have to be smart about the way you architect it. So, great question. Um, so that's really, John, the quick snapshot. Um, and we're now going to dig deep into some of these issues. We're going to talk about um, specifically uh, what is the direction of backup, what practitioners are doing,